Moving on to the rest of the day, there will be a few showers heading from the southeast with temperatures dropping to 7 degrees Celsius. Year 4 children at Frampton Cotterill School in South Gloucestershire have been spending time on a geography project about the weather. Their teacher, Claire Taylor, has been helping the children develop geographical skills and understanding about the climate inside and outside the classroom. Over the past month, they've been making and using their own equipment to create a record of temperature, rainfall and wind speed. In this programme, we'll see the class develop their understanding of weather through literacy, dance, maths and ICT. And in a subsequent programme, two geography experts will analyse this topic approach to teaching. Okay. The school has recently so moved away from a self-contained subject approach and has developed a style of teaching that uses topics to deliver an integrated curriculum. It's fair to say what the child gets out of it is a more meaningful relationship with the information. Because everything is centred on the topic and yet it's structured, all the links that are there reinforce each other and the children absorb it that much more easily. By doing topic work it links all the subjects together which helps children's knowledge, it helps children understand because they're not moving from one subject to another subject to another subject. There's like a link which helps with clarity and understanding and I think it just bridges the gaps of children's learning. We're going to have a discussion on the carpet in pairs um, talking about how we could improve the vocabulary of sentences that are already written on the board and then we're going to come back to the tables and in pairs using the whiteboards children are going to do mind maps about language they could use in their weather poems. Now today we're going to be writing some weather poems thinking about all the information we know about weather, all the different types of weather, how this weather makes us feel. Now on the board I was thinking, I was having a little play and decided to write my own little stanza about weather using the word beautiful. And I thought what I'd like you to do is in pairs looking at the words which are underlined in red to think of different words, better words we could use. First of all, we'll just read the verse. Beautiful clouds up in the sky. Beautiful rain catches my eye. Beautiful puddles fall in the street. Beautiful marks I make with my feet. Modelling the poem in this way provides a scaffold to help the children work on their own poems. Working in pairs is a strategy which gives them time to discuss possible alternatives to the words underlined in red. Shall we put gliding? Shall we write Holly's word in? Much better than my up. Ding. Beautiful clouds gliding in the sky. OK, what about beautiful rain catches my eye? Changing the poem on the whiteboard helps the children with ideas about what to put in their own poems. Beautiful water catches my eye. Thank you very much. To help the children think about the descriptive language in their writing, the teacher uses pictures of different weather conditions. And with a partner or in threes, I want you to use your board to do a mind map. OK? So in the middle you might have poem. And you might have the sun. Rain, snow, <coughs> um, thunder. And coming off all these, I want to, you to write as many descriptive, exciting weather words or adjectives, adverbs, that you would like to incorporate into your poems. Remember, the mind maps poems, are a tool really for the pupils really to help them work together and record all the vocabulary they're using. Good, we're going to spend between five and ten minutes doing this, so when I come round, I want these boards to be filled with ideas that you could use for your poems. OK, so talk with your partners. Say, what, what do you think about this word, Lily? Well, that's good, but this one might be better. That's a good idea. Write them all down. OK? Right. Scared. OK, so write that down. The class work in pairs to compile a bank of geographical terms and words that might be associated with weather. They follow it up with a reading in front of the whole class. 
You got a big playground voice? Yeah. Okay. Shimmering sun shines very bright. Shimmering people fly their kite. Shimmering clouds very white and round. Shimmery rain making no sound. Lovely, Rachel. Well done. And I like the way you finish off your poem. It helps them just put all their ideas down in a way that they may not be able to do in the more sort of theoretical subjects such as the science and the DT when, they, when there's sort of a right or a wrong answer. The literally lets them sort of be a bit more creative with the idea of weather. The afternoon lesson in dance continues the theme. The children are asked to think about different weather conditions and how they might be interpreted on the dance floor. The lesson begins with a warm-up. It's about 30 degrees. You're lying on the beach, the sea's there. How might you feel like moving? How might you move to show that it's a really hot, warm, sunny day? But then, all of a sudden, a dark rain cloud comes up into the sky. Show me this rain cloud. What does this rain cloud look like? It's dark. In a minute, it's going to burst open and it's going to start pouring. What does this cloud look like? How are you going to show me that the cloud is dark and any minute it's just about to burst? And then there's a clap of thunder. Show me the thunder. Show me the thunder. We have to cover dance and I think you know we could be doing dances for anything we could just be moving or getting small routines together but with the weather again it just helps them be creative and use sort of the images they have of maybe weather that we've been talking about in another subject like the geography or from our literacy poems for example the images they have they can convey through music when we're playing the music and when we're dancing think about does this reflect weather? Does this reflect the type of weather I'm thinking of? And we need to be discussing our moves. Does this work? Does that work? Does this move link on to the next move nicely? Can we put a move in the middle to link the two moves? Okay, and you do that through discussing and practicing and trying out different moves. You can do it around once, yeah. and then round the other way, and then it's still a long thing is one of the aims of the group work and the evaluation is to develop pupil skills in peer assessment. Following morning's numeracy lesson, the children have the opportunity to interpret the data on temperature, wind speed and rainfall that they've been collecting over the previous eight weeks. This morning we are doing a numeracy session based on bar graphs, line graphs and scatter graphs. Um, we're going to be using the data we've been collecting with our anemometers and rain gauges to put them into the graphs, make observations um, and see what our findings are. All the records from the month of collecting have been put into a table. The teacher uses temperature data to teach the class about line graphs. Hands up, what could we make the title of our graph? Temperature of each day. Temperature of each day. Fine. So, Kim, what do you think? What would our labels be? Would you put days at the bottom? The days along the bottom. Good. OK, what have we got for Monday, the 17th of January? What's the temperature? Chloe? 10. 10. 10 what? Degrees Celsius. That's 10. Next. Oscar? 10. Next one? 5 Celsius. 5. So we come right back down. OK, you need to make sure that we're lining them up. OK. Red and yellow table, I would like you to do a line graph 
of um, wind strength, orange and blue table, I would like you to do a bar graph of rainfall, of all the rainfall information. And greens, you will be making a large compass. Setting group tasks with varying levels of skill is the way Claire deals with differentiation. We're making a line graph to show how strong the wind strength has been for 25 days. But if they've got the hands-on experience of collecting the information, they're going to want to put it into a graph. They're going to be more interested to see what the graph looks like, which days had the most rainfall, which days had the highest temperature or lowest temperature, because they can relate to it. And I think if they relate to it, then they're going to want to know more and they're going to get more from it. Right, so now on to our weather forecasting. Finally, ICT and the chance for the children to bring all their geographical skills and knowledge together as they get the opportunity to present their own weather forecasts. It's not done just for fun. Using performance in this way helps children with their speaking and listening skills, as well as developing their ICT. Now, when we are using our camcorder, our ICT equipment, to film our weather forecasts, it is essential, absolutely essential, that those children that are working on their games are absolutely quiet so the microphone doesn't pick up anyone else talking apart from our weather forecaster. So if we use the next 10 minutes to have a practice, just brush up our weather forecasting and presenting skills. Remember to smile, remember to look down the camera so that our forecasts are really authentic. Okay? Any other points? Chloe? Smile. Smile. A nice warm smile. Hello, welcome to the 6 o'clock news. North of Scotland, you can see very terrible hurricanes reaching wind speeds of up to 100 miles an hour. Whilst down in the bottom of the country, you will get some sunny heat waves. By doing topic work, there's a lot more hands on, it's a lot more interactive, and I think the majority of children really do respond well to those interactive sessions. Today looks very bright with lots of sunny spells with temperatures reaching to 9 degrees Celsius with a slight breeze heading from the west. So it's all very well doing topic work through the curriculum but as long as it's implemented and carried out in a way that's valuable to the children and for their learning needs then I think it's, it's a success. Right, well we're, we're learning ourselves as, as educationalists a lot more these days about how children learn but most children will learn more readily if what they're learning is meaningful and if it's part of their experience. If we're able to go outside and do something with um, instruments we've actually made and we've learned something of the maths of them, we've learned something of how to discuss uh, the weather uh, sensibly with appropriate vocabulary, these things are hitting elements of the national curriculum in a way that children don't notice it being taught, it's, they're absorbing it very naturally.